And welcome to Only Connect, the show that turns the humble pub quiz into a form of tertiary education. Of course, unlike tertiary education, we don't leave you massively in debt. And unlike a pub quiz, our teams can't nip to the loo with a smartphone if they don't know the answer. And unlike a pub, nobody's drunk. Except me. So that connection doesn't really hold up, but we've got dozens more that do, if only our teams can spot them. And they probably can, because this is a quarter-final, so both teams here have already won their heats. On my right, it's the Ailesman. Chris Quinn, a computer programmer who is a keen scuba diver and enjoys a good hoppy bitter, whatever that is. Graham Barker, a dentist and amateur fisherman who runs an annual local beer festival. And their captain, Mark Kerr, a self-confessed connoisseur of real ale who works as a chartered surveyor. Mark, dare I ask how the Ailesman celebrated their victory in the heat? Well, I'd hate to spoil any illusions, but... We went to the hotel and went early to bed with a glass of water. No, we didn't. Went to the pub. Had loads of beer. Delighted to yes. hear it. Well, I hope your hangovers have abated because you are <laughs> about to meet the in-laws. John Heal, a graphic designer who's in the process of building his own guitar. Penny Heal, a maths and philosophy graduate and aficionado of the opera. And their captain, Jason Stevens, a patent attorney and science fiction fan with an interest in architecture. They are husband, wife and brother. They're the in-laws. Jason, you knocked out the mountain men in your heat. What are your tactics for today's match? Um, try not to have it go down to the last question like it did last time. That was just too stressful. <laughs> well, I can't promise you it won't be stressful. That's the very idea. You don't mind if we lose by a lot, as long as, as, long as we're not, you know, have that terrible last minute. Oh, who's going to get there first? <sighs> no, never again. Well, I say... Let the tension begin with round one. This is where the team simply have to tell me what is the connection between four apparently random clues. The quicker you tell me, the more points you get. Ailesman, you won the toss, so may I invite you to please select your Egyptian hieroglyph. Uh, lion, please. Lion, the first clue of the quarterfinal is coming up now. Where do we turn from transportation? Topple the Well, it could probably be anything that we... Yes, next one. Yeah. Next, please. Destroying your fish. Doesn't ring any. No idea. Destroy some fish. Any idea? Yeah. Anything? Yeah, I think it's a literary one. Well. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Next, please. Could they be capital offences? Ten seconds. Yes, yes, I think they could be. Yes, before the abolition. Yeah. Should we go for that? Yep. Yeah, happy with that? Yep. We think these were all offences for which one could uh, be executed in, uh, in England. Coming in after just three clues, you get two points. They are crimes that used to carry the death penalty. Final one would be treason. Do you know when capital punishment was abolished for treason? I think it was in the 90s, was it? Yes, it was under the European legislation, about 94 or something. 98. 98. As recently as mm. 1998, you could theoretically be executed for treason, but not anymore. So, in-laws, your turn to pick a hieroglyph. Um, we'll go for the Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. First clue coming up now. Right, right. Fictitious eh? Yeah, pub pub pick first appearances of fictitious pubs. Well, we'll have to go for the second. Next, please. Right, right. that's thrown us. That's thrown us. Um, I think we'll have to go for the next one. Yes, next, please. Mecca? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, no, rooftop gigs. Ten seconds. Was there a rooftop gig in Broadcasting Yes, it was you too. Yeah. All right, okay. then. Uh, we're going to say the rooftop gigs. Well, then, it's going to be two points to you as well. They are locations <coughs> of <coughs> rooftop performances. Moe's Tavern, that was an episode of The Simpsons, where a barbershop quartet played on the roof. Broadcasting House 2009, who played there? You too. You two played on the roof. Number three, Savile Row, 1969. Was that the Beatles? Beatles? Yes, that was actually the final live performance from the Beatles. And who played on the roof of Buckingham Palace in 2002? Brian, Brian May. May. The, great the great Brian May. 
On this show, we like a rock star who's also a physicist. Three cheers for him. So, Ailesman, please pick a hieroglyph. Um, we'll have Horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. First clue coming up now. Next, please. You think these are all one legs? You only, have, only, have, only, have, only stand on one leg. You're quite right. It's all to do with standing on one leg or having one foot on the floor. Last clue would have been race walkers. They are obliged to have one foot on the ground at all times, otherwise they're running. The Hayes Code, censorship guidelines that said in bedroom scenes, acts have a foot on the floor. Flamingos, it's obvious. And Adam, now that's uh, according to legend, Adam stood on a Sri Lankan mountain on one foot for hundreds of years, known as Adam's Peak. That's the name of the mountain. So very well done. Points to you and back to the in-laws to pick a hieroglyph. Uh, twisted Flax, please. Twisted Flax. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's the music question. You're going to be hearing your clues. Okay. <laughs> First one coming up now. Arsabas. I think it is Arsabas, yes. The sign. The sign. Okay, next please. Stand by me, Benny King. Ace King. Ace King. It's. Carls? Yes, Carls. Queen. Queen will happen. Shall we go for it? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. We think they're all performed by artists with cards in their name. It's like you didn't want to hear from Brian May. <laughs> <laughs> we heard the Ace of Bass and Benny King. We would have heard from Jack Johnson and, of course, Queen. They are artists with playing cards in their names. Very well done for three points. And it's back to you, Ailesman. Well, we can't have water. We'll have two reads, please. Two reads, then. These are going to be picture clues. You've got the picture question. First one coming up on your screen now. Next, please. Yeah, two or two. Cake. A, a torus or torus or something. Jeff, next, next one. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Books. Bookends, bookshelves. Yeah, two. Ten seconds. To get the next last one. Yeah. La next, please. Three seconds. No. no, well, there's a possible bonus for you then, in laws. I think Any ideas? Sort of Not a possible conversation uh, opportunity. We, we have no idea, I'm no afraid. Answer. Well, bicycle helmets, cakes, books, and children's clothes are in this country yeah, all exactly. zero rated for VAT. Well, I say that. They were when the question started, the way this government's going <laughs> over the minute. Possibly that uh, no longer applies, but that is the answer. Zero ratings for that. Final question, then, is going to you in-laws. It's water. And your first clue is coming up now. Emin, manganese. manganese. Uh, next, please. Yeah. Next, please. Cobalt. Well, batteries, but cobalt, zinc, blue, manganese, cadmium, yellow, cobalt, yeah, green. Yes, the colours, yes. Um, it, they, they're... Well, I mean, cobalt... No, just cadmium, cadmium, cadmium yellow is a colour, cobalt, yeah, colours in oil paint. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Ten seconds. Uh, we think they're colours of oil paints. Cadmium yellow, cobalt blue... Uh, cobalt green, rather. And mang manganese blue. I'll take it. They're colours of acrylic paints. Manganese blue, cadmium yellow, cobalt green and titanium white would have been the last one. Acrylic paint colours. So, at the end of round one, the Aylesmen have got four points, but the in-laws are in the lead with seven. In round two, I'm going to be asking about sequences. The teams may see a maximum of three clues because my question is sequentially what would come forth. 
Ailsman, you to go first again. Please pick a hieroglyph. Eye of Horus. The Eye of Horus, first in a sequence coming up. What is fourth? Time starts now. Advertising agencies, they've been used by the Conservative What's the latest one they used? No, I don't Can we go for the next? Yeah. Next, please. Ah, oh, I know. Just have to Yes. Yeah. Should we go okay. to that? Yeah, we'll go there. ITV. For what reason? We think it's um, Crozier, Adam Crozier's um, positions as uh, a director um, of Saatchi and Saatchi, then he went to the FA, then he went to the post office, or the Royal Mail, and he's now, now he's gone to... Um, ITV. ITV. ITV is the answer you gave me, and that's the answer I'm looking for. Very good early buzz. They are organisations of which Adam Crozier has been chief executive. That's right, after the FA, I think many would agree he did a wonderful job at the <laughs> Royal Mail and is now at ITV. First class job. By which you mean it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. In-laws, please pick a question. A uh, horned viper, please. The horned viper. These are going to be picture clues. What would you expect to see in the fourth picture? Okay. First one coming up now. Maybe vanilla. Uh, it could be anything, couldn't it? Next, please. Scooter. Mini vanilla. Mini scooter. Mini. Mini. Micro. Nano iPod. Nano. Is it Nano that comes after Micro? Yeah, Micro then Nano. The mini. 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 Micro. Nano. I think it is. Shall we go for it? Ten seconds. Um, yeah, next, please. Ooh. No. Oh, no. <laughs> um, something involving the word Pico, <laughs> but not quite sure what. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to give you two points. We went for Pico Volcano in Tenerife. Ah. That's a Pico de Gallo salsa you could have picked, but the main thing is something involving Pico. For what reason? Uh, where's um, their um, suffix and prefixes for going down in orders of magnitude, milli vanilli, obviously a micro scooter, not a mini scooter, an iPod Nano, and then something involving Pico. That's absolutely right. SI prefixes decreasing by a factor of a 1,000 each time. Milli, micro, nano, Pico would be fourth. Well done. Back to you, Ailsman. Two reads. Two reads. First one coming up now. Two, seven. Any idea? Do the film seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, could be, yeah. Should we go for the next one? Yeah. yeah. Next, please. It's got three years. 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 It's um, we don't really know, but we're going we're gonna to have a stab at uh, five equals uh, 117. I'm afraid not. I'm looking for a very specific answer here, and that's certainly not <laughs> it. So I'm going to show you the third in the sequence, right. in-laws, and a possible yeah. bonus if you can tell me what's fourth. I can't give you too long, though. No. i tell you what the sequence is. It is the lowest numbers with two, three, four and five syllables. And five would be 77. Lowest numbers with the number of syllables shown in the digit there. So, no points. In-laws, please pick a question. Uh, lion, please. Lion. First in a sequence coming up. What's fourth? <clears throat> Time starts now. Next, Next please. <laughs> Are they first kings? kings of... Have there only been one? No. Yeah, it could be kings that there's only been one of. Um, next, please. Victoria. Um, yeah, Victoria, Victoria then. It's yeah. Like the yeah. We haven't had a Queen Jane, have we? So. Um, it's Victoria, isn't it? Shall we go? Yeah. Victoria. Uh, we're going to go for Victoria. For what reason? Um, monarchs that there's only been one of so far in 
chronological order. There's been one King Stephen, one King John, one Queen Anne, one Queen Victoria. Quite right. Rulers with unique regnal names next in a sequence would be Victoria. Back to you then, Ailsman. Twisted Flax. Twisted Flax. First in a sequence coming up now. It's, um, it's, um, error codes on web pages. 401 is old. 402. Is it 404? Is it not 404? I think it could be not found. I think it's, um, web page error messages. So it's 404. Page not found. Sure. I think so, yeah. Do you want to get another one? Um, no, I think, I think... Go for it. Okay. Go for it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 404, page not found. If there's one thing I love, it's seeing a team come in after one clue and get it right. Oh, well, interesting. Five <laughs> points to you. These are, as I heard you mumble, HTTP status codes, error codes on a computer, 401 unauthorised, 402 payment required, 403 forbidden, and the one we all see all the time, 404 not found. Brilliant. Very well done to you for all those points. Back to you, in-laws. Water is the last remaining question. First in the sequence, coming up now. Um, Penny Lane. Yes. So, oh, what, what, what are they doing? Well, well, next, please. So, what's the first one? Yes, we're getting backwards. Yeah. yeah. Barber. Selling photographs. Is that definitely the first one? Of every head he's had the pleasure to have known. Is it definitely the first one, though? I believe so. I know. Shall we go to Ten the seconds. one to make sure? Next, please. Right. Yeah. Uh, a barber selling photographs? Yeah. Have one more go. A barber shaving customers? I'm afraid that's not the answer oh. I'm looking for. We're in the quarter-final stage now. Oh, I cannot be too lenient. There is a possible mm. bonus for you, Ailsman. It's a barber showing photographs. It is a barber showing photographs. Of every customer he's had the pleasure to have known. Of every customer he's had the pleasure to have known. It is the characters in oh. Penny Lane, the main characters, going backwards through the verses. But I'm afraid, as a lyrical quote, I must get it exact. So the bonus goes to you, Ailsman. That means, at the end of round two, that the in-laws have got 11 points, but after a sudden spurt, the Ailsman are ahead with 13. <laughs> Round three is the connecting wall. It's our verbal Sudoku. 16 clues that must be sorted into four perfectly connected groups of four. In-laws, it is your turn to go first this time. First of all, please select your wall, lion or water. Uh, we'll have lion, please. OK, you have got two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting now. Bond villains. Oh, God, yes. No. Warlock? Yeah. Yes. OK, chairs. Windsor, rocking, carver, um, tub. tub. OK. OK. Belmont stakes, Richmond stakes, horse races. Just three Jack. lives now, of course. Kent, Cumronda. What is Cumronda? It's a song. Yeah, it's the national anthem. As okay. is Crimmond, which is a song. Oh, right, this. And okay. Richmond, I think they're, they're hymn tunes. OK. Ri Crimmond, so, Cumronda, Richmond are mm -hmm. possibly Repton. OK. Are, are hymn tunes, or maybe... Hang on, so, so you, think, you think Cumronda, Crimmond and Richmond are all yes, hymn songs? Right, OK. So then we've got to think of... Jekyll, Doctor, um, Gertrude, Jekyll, um, Gardeners... Um, I'm afraid you're on your own if it is. Yeah. Just a minute. Belmont, uh, Repton, Belmont... Of, no, they're not alter egos. Of. Oh, Kent's an alter ego. Yeah, yes, Kent but, is. Jekyll is, yeah. Um, Mr. Repton, Mr. Ludon. Loudon. Yeah. Loudon Wainwright, Repton Wainwright, no. Repton, Repton, is he um, Scarlet Pimpernel? Maybe? No. You've got a minute left. Um. <sighs> okay, well, if you think they're alter egos. Possible. Which one do you think we're going to go for for the, for the songs? Belmont or Ludon? Try Belmont first. Things start going for it. Okay, that's it. You've sold the wall. 
So, four points for the groups you found, but do you know the connections? I'm not sure. The first group, <laughs> no Drax, Kleb, all of. Oh, all Bond villains. They're Bond villains. Can you tell me the films? Dr. Doctor no. Uh, mm -hmm. Drax is Moonraker. Mm -hmm. Kleb is Russia from Russia with Love. With love. All of. Is it one of the new ones? Probably. <laughs> I would say yes, because it's got Roger Moore in it. Ah, not that okay, I'm old, not that but new, then. <laughs> Octopussy. The real, you know, if you were going to parody a Bond film, that's the yes. one. Roger Moore in a safari suit. <laughs> yes, General Orlov is an octopusy. Next group, Tub Rocking Windsor Carver. Well, you got that one. Chairs. They're chairs. They're simply chairs. Belmont, Crimmond, Richmond, Cumronda. Tunes of hymns. That's it. Tunes of famous hymns. Crimmond. Do you know what that's the tune of? Not a clue. No. <laughs> Crimmond is the tune for the 23rd Psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd. That's the tune name, Crimmond. And the last group, the turquoise group. Any idea? Uh, we think they're all alter egos of um, fictional characters. Clark Kent is Superman. Jekyll is Mr Hyde. Repton, did you think was the Scarlet Pimpernel? Probably not. And Ludon is somebody else. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately not, and I'm afraid ah. you're going to kick yourselves because you did have the answer. They are famous gardeners. Oh. I didn't read out the names because I couldn't have said Jekyll. I'd have had to say Jekyll, Gertrude um. Jekyll. And the others you've got there, Humphrey Repton, J.C. Loudon and William Kent, famous gardeners. But <laughs> you get four points for the groups you found and three more points for the connections. That's a total of seven. So let's see what the Aylesman can do with the connecting wall. They've got the other wall, water, 16 new clues. Still need sorting into four connected groups of four. Hello again, Aylesman. You have got two and a half minutes to solve this puzzle. The clues are coming up now. Right. Porridge is a Mayon Mayonnaise, holiday yeah. sauce. Yeah. Bordelais sauce. Bayonet sauce. sauce. Yeah. Right. St. Ives. Norwich St. Ives, Newlyn, the articles. Yeah. Aren't they? Norwich St. Ives, Newlyn. Yeah. And Euston Road. Euston Road School, yeah. Right. Oh. oh. Glasgow. Glasgow. Glasgow School of Art. Euston Road. Newlyn. So try Norwich and St. Ives. Okay. Go, yeah, go on to Newlyn, Glasgow. St. Ives. Right. Three Swark, strikes that's how you finish now. letters. Italy, Swark, I love you, and all that. Nick is off really. Yeah, that's it. Um, Bolto. What's that? Bolto. Uh, what would these be then? Air, uh, French, Tudors. Kiss, French kiss. Air, uh, kiss, French kiss. What's like kiss? kiss. Yeah, yeah, you've done it. And at a stroke, it was done. Very good, very good. So four points to you for finding the groups. Let's talk through the connections. Bayern, Bordel, Holland, Mayen. They're all places with sauces named after them. Sauces named? Can you tell me anything about those sauces? They all taste very nice. Right. Uh, Bernays sauce, I don't know. No, I don't know any. Hollandaise sauce has got eggs in it, hasn't it? So has yeah. mayonnaise sauce. Yeah. That's it. A Bernays sauce is a white sauce flavoured with tarragon, Bordelais, red wine and onions. Are you not cooks? Aylesman. <laughs> of course. So you just, you just beer, beer, <laughs> beer, beer and then for it. Beer, beer, beer <laughs> and then kebabs after the <laughs> chips, yeah. I suppose if you're drinking beer throughout, you don't really want... Heavy egg based sauces. No, no, no. A simple pie. That's what yeah. Pork spatchings. Keep playing pie, <laughs> isn't it? Exactly. Right, back to the grid. St Ives, Euston Road, Newlyn, Glasgow. They're all schools of art. Schools of art movements in British art known as schools. Quite right. Norwich, Italy, Oldtop, Swark. They're um, sign offs on uh, love letters. That's right, used most famously during the Second World War. Go on, I'd like to hear you tell me what they stand for. Well, Norwich, I've always been told, is Nick us off ready when I come home. That's right, much to my horror, yeah. because I don't think knickers start with an N. I have no moral problem with it. <laughs> it's just a spelling mistake I don't like to see. Um, Italy, I trust and love you. That's it. Bolt up, I don't know anybody of that no. one. And Swalk, seal with loving kiss. Bolt up a little more obscure, apparently better on lips than on paper. Yeah. yeah. Although I've met a few people who would disprove that theory. <laughs> but that's what it is, abbreviations on love letters. And the last one, Air, Judas, French, Butterfly. They're all types of kiss. Exactly so. The first two being the kind you don't want, having had that written on a letter. An air kiss, the fake kind. Judas kiss, an act of betrayal. So, four points for the groups that you found. Four more points for the connections. Plus, of course, the bonus two, because you got it all right. That is a maximum of ten points. Very well done. Let's see how that leaves the scores going into round four. The in-laws have got 18 points, but the Aylesmen are in the lead with 23. And if you were shouting jekyll, jekyll compulsively throughout that round, it might be time you had a coffee. 
Alternatively, you could try playing a connecting wall on our website. The address is coming up now. Meanwhile, what the hell, let's play round four. This is the missing vowels round, which you'll remember teams from your earlier heats. We take well-known names or phrases in, of course, connected groups of four. We take out the vowels, we squidge up the consonants, and I want you to tell me what the names, sayings or phrases are. If you buzz in and hesitate or get a single letter wrong, I will deduct a point and throw it over to the other team. So round four is absolutely where the match and the place in the semi-final is going to be decided. Fingers on buzzers then, teams. The first category are all stage works banned by the Lord Chamberlain. In-laws. The Mikado. Correct. Salesman. Salome. Correct. In-laws. A view from the bridge. By Arthur Miller. Correct. In-laws. Endgame. Endgame. By Samuel Beckett. Correct. Next category, people known as Q. In-laws. Quincy Jones. Yes. Ailesman. Desmond Llewellyn. And the Bond films, of course, Q, correct. In-laws. Arthur Quiller Couch. Arthur Quiller Couch, correct. Ailesman. Quentin Tarantino. Correct. Next category, road junctions. In-laws. Oxford Circus. Correct. Ailesman. Scotch Corner. On the A1 in North Yorkshire, correct. In-laws. The plane. In Oxford, correct. Halesman. Five ways. In Birmingham, correct. Next category, cube numbers. In-laws. Eight. Two cubed, correct. In-laws. 125. Five cubed, correct. Halesman. 27,000. 30 cubed, correct. Ailesman. One. One cubed, correct. Next category, dialects and accents. Ailesman. Geordie. Correct. Ailesman. Appalachian. Correct. In-laws. Longer dog. Correct. Ailesman. Stray English. I'm afraid that's not the answer. Possible bonus in-laws. Estuary English. Correct. Next category, seafood. Ailesman. Let's snap one. Correct. In-laws. Dublin Bay Prawn. Correct. <laughs> that last one, abalone. After a nail-biting round four, the in-laws have got a very impressive 30 points but the winners are the Ailesmen with 32. Very tight scores, and it means we have to say goodbye to you, in-laws, which I'm sorry to do. You've been a great team and done some brilliant quizzing. But Ailesmen, congratulations. You are through to the semi-finals. Please join us next time for an episode which will be like, well, imagine if Wikipedia were made flesh and 154% more accurate. Goodbye. <laughs> And we're into the Only Connect semi-finals here on BBC4 next Monday at the same time. Next tonight, a major new series begins with a trip back to the Renaissance for the art of Germany. <laughs>